Well, everybody, welcome to another Shop Talk, and we also are calling these Tech Talks because we are kind of trying to cover as many things as we can in racing, motors, transmissions, and today we are at Big G Carbs, and we are here with Steve Atkins, and we're going to talk a little bit about carburetors, and probably the featured event today, if there's going to be one, <laughs> is going to be the... Uh, two-barrel carburetor for a hobby stock. I guess that's more or less your specialty, right, Steve? It is. Okay, so we're going to get into that, and we are actually going to do a flow test here so a little bit later on. But first of all, Steve, uh, I know you bring in a varied background into this uh, carburetor stuff that you're doing here. Uh, a driver, an IMCA tech official, and now a carburetor specialist is what we're going to entitle you. <laughs> but... Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, how you got to this point where you're at right now? Oh, gee. Well, started racing in the 80s in a street stock. Um, oh, I had to do most of the work myself, so I kind of had to learn. Uh -huh. um, then quit for a long time and just kind of helped everybody else out. I, um, a lot of guys that I helped um, got fairly good at setting the cars up uh -huh. cars my cars were always fast whether i worked on them or they owned them <clears throat> they were usually pretty fast as long as i wasn't the one driving <laughs> um, okay <laughs> I, you know i won a couple races but i mean um, it was kind of by default because uh -huh. the real fast guys crashed out you know <laughs> but hey it, it, there's no asterisk by the win so uh, right exactly yep. <laughs> take them any way we can get them <laughs> that's right yeah. and um so i I realized that I really wasn't that great of a driver, so I started putting people in them mm -hmm. to drive because um, that's the only way we could get wins. Mm -hmm. So, and still working on them myself. Yeah. So. Mostly on the carburetor part, or just, just well, still well, on well, the, well, the whole carb. Uh, but you know, carburetors are getting so expensive nowadays. A guy can't uh, has to work on his own carburetor um, just to get by. Because mm -hmm. you know, dang, you can spend. You can spend two thousand dollars on a carburetor, uh, um, and it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Willie's carburetor, uh, you know the brand names. Um, a good four barrel, like for a modified, mm -hmm. you know twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but the the two barrels, um, Rochester's aren't that bad. There's some uh, the big name. Uh, carburetor builders and they still get six seven hundred dollars for yeah. basically a, a modified stock carburetor um, a modified stock now that sounds like a contradiction within itself <laughs> yeah, yeah it does it does okay you may be getting a little ahead of me so let, let's continue okay. on on this line of thought we were on on this okay driver car owner now, the other thing I kind of want to get into is the IMCA official. I think this year you were an official up at Thunder Hill, from what I understand. Yes, I worked. I had the privilege to work with Super Dave this year and uh, worked for the uh, Conkerites up there, Mike and Pam. Nice people. Mm -hmm. Nice facility. Um, and before um, a couple of years up at I-35, um, a couple in a row, then... Uh, then I went to Thunder Hill. We won't get into that. Yeah. <clears throat> but again, this year for 2012, I just found out yesterday that I'll be back up there again as their I-35. Yeah, yeah. as their I IMCA tech officials. So. Okay. Uh, that's got well. I understand. While we're kind of in that area, also uh, you do the Boone Nationals. So yes, you I'm on the. <laughs> you know, I don't know why I forgot about that. I like that so much. Um, I mean, yeah, that's well, a no. terrific week, isn't it? Oh, uh, oh my I, God. If, if somebody hasn't been there, they need to go. <laughs> um, I guess it's just like going to the Indianapolis 500 or uh -huh. um, something like that. It's a whole week of racing. Yeah. And uh, um, just about 24 hours a day because there's, um, as being on the uh, lead tech team, mm -hmm. um, we start pre teching cars at like, shoot, this year, it was about 9 o'clock in the morning. And uh, some nights we didn't get done till two yeah. or three a.m. Oh, so you're that. talking about an eighteen-hour day. Yeah, yeah. Um, How many cars in a day would you say you 
you look at. I'm, I, and the reason I ask that is because I was just out at Salina here uh, this last fall for the uh, Fall Nationals, I think they call that out there. And, of course, it was the IMCA race. Mm-hmm. And they were teching the winners from the night before the following day. And I think a top five in each class. So they were doing like 25 or 30. That's probably a drop in a bucket to what you do at the national. Oh, God. Um <laughs> Well, up at the Super Nationals, you Wednesday and Thursday, you're talking about oh, 80 heat races. Oh my! Um, of course, that's two classes. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, for every one of those, we tech the top two in the heat race because they qualify for the uh-huh. for the qualifying feature uh-huh. for that night. So we take them in the infield. By the time we get done with them, the next heat's done. Uh-huh. So they come in, and that kind of goes on all day. Oh, man. And 160? 80? Do the top two, that's 160? Yeah, that's just that's just for the heat race. And then, <laughs> then we have the, the all-star race, and you have the, um, the all the fast shafts has something going on, and uh-huh. uh, a race of champions. Um, and then you'll have three or four B features Mm -hmm. in every class Mm -hmm. and uh, I believe maybe just the top two also goes into that qualifying feature but then we take the top ten out of the out of those Mm -hmm. to the big tent and really have fun yeah it is it sounds like you say uh, especially for the officials it's got to be a fatiguing job to go through that because what is that thing four or five days if i remember right well we we start monday morning mm-hmm. in fact we start sunday afternoon um uh, doing pre tech and so we go sunday afternoon uh, all day monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday so five and a half days five and a half days wow 18 some of them are or at least 15 hour days yeah. That's, that's a short day. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I think I've been to Boone once or twice. I can't remember. But I was so fatigued <laughs> in the first evening just watching the races that I thought, can I actually go back for another day and do this? <laughs> and I can't, like I said, I can't imagine how it must be for an official. Let me ask you this, though. As an official there, and I presume you are pretty, are you in the motor kind of carburetor area? Is that where you work, or is it an overall deal? It just whatever uh, uh, Tom wants us, you know. He he assigns uh, uh, him and Brett assign okay. different guys to different deals. Just I guess it's whatever straw you draw. Whatever straw you. Okay, let me ask you this: What is the most blatant <laughs> thing that you've ever seen as far as <laughs> overlooking the rules? Oh, if you gee. could pick out one thing, just one one guy that was real blatant about it. Well, not person. Don't tell me any names. No, but <laughs> no, I, no, I can't. No, but, but I mean, what would be the most blatant? Well, in a in a street stock, a, a, a fella had a. They're supposed to run a, a 544-12 Holly, <clears throat> and he he won the race and just smoked them. Uh-huh. And he come in. He was running a, a an old 652 barrel that was a 6425, and I recognized because I had one. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought about running it, um, and he just couldn't believe he said no it, it's a two barrel i said yeah <laughs> but it's you know and it and it wasn't just a uh it was made by one of the big big companies so he probably paid fifteen hundred dollars oh for this my thing, gosh you know to win 150 yeah he, he did win 150 yeah well no he didn't <laughs> but uh Oh man, that's a huge old carburetor. He had the advantage. You could tell something yeah. was up because he was just blowing them, just blowing them away. Yeah. I was gonna say it's usually visible in some way. <laughs> it is when you're going. That don't look right. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know something's not right. Okay, tell me this: How many uh, choices of carburetors are there out there for? Now, like I say, we're pretty much, I think, going to talk about hobby stocks. But how many choices of carburetors? I guess what I'm saying is, as far as manufacturers are there for a, a hobby stock driver to choose from oh gee like the big manufacturers or the, the big rebuilders whatever you could buy oh god 
there's bunches. Are there? Yeah, there's there's uh, some big ones here in in Missouri. Uh, one of the biggest, CNS, down south. They're they're a big one. Um, they're just all over the country. There's probably twenty. Okay, that's what I was looking for was a number. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'd say there's probably there's probably twenty of them. And um, the, the thing about it is, is most of those big companies just they don't do any R and D on the Rochester's anymore. Uh -huh. They're just stagnant. They they figured out whatever they want to do to them ten years ago, mm -hmm. and that's all they're going to do. All right. And uh, I keep looking for things. Yeah. More, more and more and more and more air, more air. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, we're so we're, we're going to say there's probably twenty different choices that they've got out there. When uh, when you are teching carburetors. What necessarily, I, I guess I'm asking a double question here. One, what are the IMCA rules without listing everything, which I don't know how big the rule book is on carburetors, but I'm sure lengthy. But basically, when you're checking a carburetor track, what are you going to check? We check the the Venturi size and... Uh, now, is that that's the opening? That's the barrel. That's the barrel. The, no, are you talking about the big barrel or the two ones, two openings at the top? No, the, the, the two bigger ones. Okay. The Venturi's. Okay. And we have a, a gauge for that, that that goes down in there. I think I've seen it on your bench yesterday. Yeah, I got one. Why don't there. you toss it to us if you got one? <laughs> we have a helper here. Thank you. What's your name? Mark. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> we got Mark helping us. Yeah. This it goes. This goes down inside the carburetor. Uh -huh. And uh, if this falls down through, then it's too big. Oh, really? Okay, that's that, the deal. Yeah. If the carburetor's still on the car, this is. Uh, the main thing we do, uh -huh. um, and the other side, there's a, a booster that can't be any bigger than this on the inside. So okay. we check that. Check that too. If the carburetor's off, we check the uh, size of the uh, throttle bore, the the butterflies, mm -hmm. how big they are. And we've got a gauge for that. And if it's uh, if it's too big, that's yeah, too bad. Too bad. Well, it, most it, most of the time, I, you know. If you find a guy, it's usually because he didn't know it was too big. I mean, it, there's not that much um, just flat, blatant cheating. Mm -hmm. It's usually just um, not watching, not paying any attention to the rules, not paying attention to the carburetor. It's getting old, uh -huh. you know, and it, it starts getting war. Well, and you probably get to one sometimes, too, about, well, I bought it from this guy, and he said oh, it was God. legal. <laughs> you don't know how many times. Well, that's the way I bought it. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna move. I've out. used that one before too. <laughs> that, all the all these stories these guys are telling me, they yeah. they, they figure they're new stories. Yeah. I, I used those stories twenty years ago, <laughs> trying to get away with something. Okay, <laughs> we are gonna kind of move out of your officiating duties and get more into your carburetor specialty field. <laughs> and uh, since you are an official, I'm sure <laughs> that you know about how far you can go with whatever it is that you do to these carburetors. Um, I guess what I want to know is what what can you do to a carburetor that, that is legal? Uh, and I know we talked the other day and you told me, which really surprised me, is if a racer goes out and buys a carburetor, there's a good possibility that it's still not going to deliver the peak performance that you can get out of that carburetor because you've had people bring new ones to you and they didn't absolutely they weren't moving the air through them that they should have they had parts missing from them yeah the, uh, a lot of them don't have the parts in that they advertise they have in them um they uh, a, a guy will spend uh, you know two or three hundred dollars on a carburetor and, and expects it to just bolt it on and go and a lot of them don't flow 75 percent of what they say yeah and uh well, I've had lots of them yeah, I think you, come to you, me. You told me, because we were looking at, at one of the tests that you were doing, that you had a brand new one came in one time, and you correct me if these figures are wrong, but like 450, what is it, CSI or C? CFM. CFM, and that should have been around 600? <clears throat> I had one. I just uh, did one this past weekend uh, uh, for a local guy. Um, he bought it out of a, cat out of a catalog, and um, he run it two or three times two years ago uh -huh. and he brought it here and before i did anything i put it on the flow bench 
to see, and it flowed 406 <laughs> CFM. It, it was it was bad. I, I don't. It was bad. I, I helped him out a lot. And now, so I understand this correct. This was a racing carburetor to start yes. with. It wasn't some stock carburetor. Well, well it, it, uh, the Rochester two barrels have to be stock to start with. Well, they have to be uh, the, a stock carburetor. A stock carburetor that that used to be on a car. Okay. And then you modify it. And supposedly, when you buy one out of the catalog, they've done. Um, they board them out. They say as big as they can go, and um, <clears throat> they do this and they do that to them, and. You know, it, it tells you exactly what what mm-hmm. they do, uh-huh. and uh, shoot, half the time it it's not done. So it's a good idea to take it, it to your it, local carburetor guy, if not big. It is, G. And, that, and, that, and that goes <laughs> back. That goes back to they're they're really not they're stagnant on their R and D there, and um, I think they they figure they just get a bunch of parts, and the low guy on the totem pole puts them together. Uh-huh. You know, and I think that's what happens. Okay. So, without giving away any of your trade secrets, which I'm sure, having done this for as long as you have, there are some things that you've learned <laughs> about doing carburetors. Without giving away any of your trade secrets, what can be done to one of these carburetors? If if you everything has to measure within tolerances, what do you do? You just get them just barely within the tolerances. I mean, if you take a gauge and... and put it in there and you, and you tap on it it'd fall through uh-huh. you know you try to get them that close and um but if you just set it in there it'll stay right well that's when i'm checking a carburetor as a tech that's what i do i take the gauge and i just set it there uh-huh. and if it you know and i'll move it and put it in about two or three different positions uh-huh. and if it don't fall through it's okay it's okay i don't go <laughs> yeah. you know because it chances are it's going to go in okay um and the uh Venturi clusters on them. Um, you, you change the the way the the fuel emulsion, uh, where the fuel mixes with the air. Mm-hmm. You can you can change that. They're not very they're not very adjustable. The, these factory style carburetors are not very adjustable. So um, you go in and you make the change, and it, they're kind of stuck with that change. Uh-huh. I mean, there's not a whole lot. Um, you can't go back. Because when you start taking a drill in there and start drilling things out, yeah. um, you're kind of stuck with it at that That's point. That's it, man. You're done. <laughs> well, I've, I've got little, my notes, I've got a little chart <laughs> of all the size drill bits I use for here mm-hmm. and the size drill bits for there. <laughs> that way I don't have to remember. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, we've kind of talked quite a bit about the carburetor so far, but something else that I'm sure has to play into this airflow process has to be the air breather uh, the the filter itself the uh, and I'm not sure what the correct term is for the piece that holds it on other than air breather <laughs> but the actual metal parts that um, surround the, the filter uh, I'm sure you do some testing with that too I mean that that has to play into it doesn't it that's a big deal um Especially for a two barrel, I mean. Oh, with a two barrel, you want every uh, cubic foot of air that you can get in that thing to go in it, and and it starts with the air cleaner. Um, I really didn't until I got till I got this new flow bench set up. I didn't realize how much different, how much difference that a, a uh, air cleaner makes, mm-hmm. and the shape of it. <clears throat> I found the best one, and, and all my customers, I give them the part number to the one that I use mm-hmm. that I found that it's the best. Would you hand that to us again? I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess I'll give this one up. <laughs> Here, you can have that back. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a, a test top stuck to it. This one right here, it's like a black hole. I'm telling you, when the air, and I, and I have put... Um, artificial smoke on this on the uh, flow bench and the air comes and it sticks to this to this surface right here mm-hmm. and it accelerates into the carburetor this, this, this air cleaner bottom is worth 30 cfm wow so, that that's got to be a bunch that is a bunch when you're ta- when you're talking about 10 cfm is a bunch yeah 30 is a lot 
um, and the same with the top. And, and pretty much it's, it's, it's with the airflow how it will come through the filter and then make this curve over the top and into the carburetor. And, and start accelerating, yep. yeah. Yep. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, uh, when I found this one, <laughs> you know. Do we dare mention that or do you sell these? <laughs> no, no. I, I just give them the part number and they get them at Speedway. Yeah, okay. I'm sure other guys sell them. Yeah. But, uh, and I got the part number written down. Of <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Mark can find Yeah, because guys ask me all the time. Uh-huh. Um, uh, customers uh, calling me all the time yeah. and asking me, well, what air cleaner should I run? Um, yeah. And size of size of fuel line and yeah um, okay. and all that stuff that's that's important too just 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 to keep the car going yeah. and I know you were telling me the other day that you thought well okay uh, the bigger's got to be better so if I use a five inch filter that's got to be better than a three inch now what about that that's true I, uh, here about oh about a month ago a guy came over and brought oh got two big arm loads. Full yeah. of air cleaner tops, bottoms, air cleaners, filters, and uh, we sat there all night, all evening, and uh, tested every one of them in different combinations and stuff. Then I, I got one that I run on my car, yeah. And it was a f- expensive, probably an eighty or ninety dollar filter, and it was a five inch filter. And uh, so I said, all right, let's try this one." So I throwed it on there, and by God, if a three inch paper filter for four dollars <laughs> flows better than that big old expensive one i couldn't believe it i uh, <laughs> i wanted to throw it away i was so i was so happy with that thing i thought <laughs> so that um let me ask you this and this is just just a question that i have in my mind uh, i could see a five inch being up here and if you had a three inch, I'm sure it's down there closer. But wouldn't the three inch, especially with the top lower, give it a closer airflow? I mean, would, could that have anything well, to do with it? Yeah. Well, you have it. Uh, your top. Uh, they some some tops on top of your air cleaner. Some of them are flat. Uh-huh. You don't want a flat one. Okay. Oh, thank, thank you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad well, Mark's here. You're, you're just behind. <laughs> you're just handy. I'll hold this. You go ahead. All right. Yeah, you want one that's domed, so that way when the air when the air comes up, yeah, it's not restricted. It comes in. That, you know that actually looks like it would be restricted, but uh-huh. it is not. Well, you it know, uh, it's it's see at five. You know, I, I was thinking a little bit about this. I think this morning before I came up here, and uh, there's that that big one I had. And I've this one, this little sucker here, uh-huh. flows better than all that. <laughs> Hard to believe. <laughs> oh, I know it. I would like to say, I was thinking a little bit about this. We'll hand this all over to Mark. We won't have to hold it. But uh, I was thinking a little bit about this that this morning, and I'm wondering if air isn't like water. It flows, you know, like when you go canoeing, you're always looking for the V that points away because the water flows to the area with the least resistance mm-hmm. and evidently air must do the same thing because actually the dome top kind of confirms that in that a, a flat one would actually put restrictions on the air i would think but it, and keep it from flowing yeah it just kind of makes dead air space yeah it just kind of stops yeah uh, the, the air does it um and and some of the uh, they have adapters um, so you can run your four barrel air cleaner on a two barrel. Mm-hmm. That, that's what most of the guys do. They'll spend fifteen bucks on one, stick it in there, and it's all flat. Uh-huh. And the air just comes and goes, and it just kind of sticks right yeah. there. And it it's a a deficit. Um, it'll take uh, flow away. So uh-huh. instead of the good the good thirty that you get with one of those, um, it might drop you twenty. Uh-huh. So that's a big swing. Wow, that's my phone. We won't that's pay attention phone? to it. <laughs> uh, Steve, can you reach the little gadget oh. right there? We, we've got to we've got to go over this. <laughs> I hope uh, everybody can see uh, what this is. <laughs> it's the as we've probably seen on many TV commercials and I don't know how many magazines. The I'm trying to remember the oh. trade name of it. Oh, there, 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 there's, there's tornado, a lot of tornado, tornado, tornado. Now, <laughs> 
<laughs> I can see they, you don't have a lot to say. <laughs> they, you know, you know, I and I bought that. I I I think I get twenty five dollars for that thing. Uh huh. And um, and that was on eBay. And uh, it's guaranteed to increase your airflow and your mileage. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I got it, and I, I brought it here. Oh, my God. I mean, that thing will spin like crazy. Yeah. Oh, it turns really free. Oh, yeah, it spins real free, but uh, it, it takes away about okay, you 30% were... of your flow. Oh, okay, 30%. Yeah. Because you were saying you were adding 30, I can't remember, the CF. C- CFM. CFM. How many CFMs would that take away? Oh God! Uh, Just a guess. Yeah, we'll 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 do it here in a minute. We'll I'll, try her out. Okay. We'll try her out. Okay. It, uh, uh, oh, it's <laughs> seventy <laughs> or something like that. Uh, Plus, I'm afraid it's going to blow up. Yeah. <laughs> if this starts spinning so fast, I'm, it'd have to vibrate the whole car. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a test here in a minute, and. Uh, I'm going to shoot some video of the tester as much as of it that I can, and but basically, uh, Steve, can you give me a little idea of how the flow tester works and the equipment that you've got hooked up to it and what it's going to show? Well, um, well, I guess what I want to say is that's in relationship to what a motor is going to do because a motor is creating vacuum in this process of internal combustion. Right. Right. Well, the flow bench uh, pulls pulls vacuum. Um, I have eight right now. I have eight power heads, and each each one is six and a half horse. Um, and this thing will well. You don't want to get the dog too close to it because <laughs> it'll pull him in. It, <laughs> it, it, it flows through an orifice, uh-huh. um, and the orifice is of a known size so when the when the system is running open um, it has cert, certain amount of uh, uh, differential across that orifice because you take readings on both sides of it mm-hmm. and then when you put a restriction on it like a carburetor mm-hmm. it takes readings again on both on both sides and plus in the plenum mm-hmm. and it takes all the pressure differences and can, computer does its little thing and yeah and it tells you the reading how, how the reading what, how the, much what the flow. performance is okay mm-hmm. uh that's one thing i really wanted to check with you uh, about it was how can you really determine from one run to the run you're doing to a run afterwards so that you know that the flow tester itself is performing the same each time I, I think I know the answer, but you tell me. <laughs> well, you, you get a, a, a an orifice, a, a, a piece of metal with a hole in it of a certain size, and and uh, it's so many percent. I believe it's eighty percent of the uh, the total flow. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I test it like it's a carburetor. I set it on there and, mm-hmm. and seal it all up. And uh, that what that's what calibrates it. Okay. And it's supposed to be it, it like I said it's it's an exact percentage of the of the whole thing. Right. Okay. So uh, that's that's how it calibrates yeah. it. And and the computer then reads that and tells you that hey, this is the same as what it was that time, and the next one's going to be. Well, you, I don't do I don't do it every time. Yeah. Um. But you can check when, when it I'm on the computer. Oh yeah, the oh, computer yeah. will tell you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So it, t- it uh, takes all human factor out of it. But, but what I well, was, the reason I was wondering this was, if you've got eight heads on your suction over there, say one of them goes out, how do you know from, like I say, one run to the next that the flow bench is the same? Is what I was trying to say. And well, the the uh, the data processor. Um, and the data logger and the software that I that I use um, is from Performance Trends, mm-hmm. and I believe I believe all the big uh, flow bench manufacturers use the same software. Okay. And it used to be you'd have a manometer 
which is you've seen their little slanted uh -huh. yes. uh, tu tubes of, of water, colored water, water in them, and they, and they were hard to, hard to work. In fact, I had one, uh -huh. and uh, it takes a lot of math mm -hmm. to yeah. to figure yeah, to figure those out. But this this new one with, with that software and the data logger that it's got, um, I could turn. Well, I think I have to run <clears throat> at least four heads to even get it to flowing. Okay. But if I run four, or I mean if I, I can run six, or I can run eight heads, and it will automatically compensate for mm -hmm. for that and uh, uh, give me a corrected uh, okay a corrected flow number. But it just doesn't, it just doesn't show you a, a number. It fluctuates because the motors get a different you know, mm -hmm. a different le electricity, and, and and they're pulling kind of all, yeah, pulling through the same same area, and uh, so the number fluctuates a lot. That it'll sit there on the screen, it might jump up and down 15 uh -huh. CFM, but when you get a reading, um, you record an average of an average 20. Okay. Yeah, it takes. Well, I can set that for more. It depends on how you know accurate yeah. and how much of an average I want to get. Uh -huh. um, but right now I got it set on 20, where it takes 20 readings and it's about one a second. Uh -huh. And uh, oh wow, one a second. Uh, okay. It takes a reading and then it averages it all it, out it, and it gives you a flow. Yeah, well, that, and that should give you the like you say that uh, an average reading of those differences if there are any. Right. And that, okay. And, yep, and that's pretty pretty yeah. darn close yeah. from time to time, from one one test to the next. Okay, Steve. Uh, man, I am. I am ready to do some flow testing. I mean, this really sounds like it'd be interesting. Um, well, it's fun. I, my, my, whenever I start the flow bench up, the dog runs. <laughs> if he'd said still, I'd flow the dog. <laughs> okay, folks, we are going to take just a little, <laughs> a, little, a little bit of a break here, and we're going to be back, and uh, Steve is going to put some... Uh, carburetors and intakes and <laughs> i don't know what all we're going to do but uh, through the different uh, we'll, we'll tests figure, here we'll figure something out <laughs> but uh, i don't know about you but i'm looking forward to it but give us just a minute here and we're going to change the camera around do some stuff and uh, we'll be back here in just a second <laughs> okay the first the first test we're going to do is a, a catalog carburetor um, that sells in all the catalogs is the rochester two barrel um Let's fire it up and see what it does. Now, isn't that pretty sad? 300. Well, let's see what we get the average. That's about all there is to a test, okay. Okay. 369.8. That's pretty sorry. That's pretty bad. <laughs> but that's what you get when you get it when you have a catalog carburetor. So and I haven't done anything to that one. So let's get one of mine put on there. Okay, we did a uh, catalog carburetor. Let's, uh, let's see what one of mine does. Give me some air, maestro.
that one come up to 480.7, but I haven't even tweaked on it much. So, um, but still, that is 110 CFM more than the um, than the catalog carburetor, and uh, I've still got some adjustments to do that before it goes out the door. I, I was going to jump out there and do it. <laughs> And since we only got the one microphone, Mike or Mike, Steve, Mike. let me ask you this: What would I've answered the worst? What would that be worth in horsepower? Oh, gee! What you're talking about, 100? Got an idea? Again. Well, you figure figure that's 30 uh, percent. So uh, on a hobby stock, uh, on a good running hobby stock, that uh, that be worth. 40. Wow. Okay. You know, I, that's what I would say, 40 horsepower or more. Okay, the, the carburetor we just tested was one of mine. Um, and now we're taking the air cleaner that we talked about earlier and just putting the air cleaner on there. We're going to test it and see what difference it makes. I think you'll be surprised. Okay. It's bouncing around 530, 535. Let's get an average on it. 529.6. That's rat that's rat at 50 CFM that air cleaner is worth. That it just it, it astonished me the first time I seen it. Um, it's amazing, but that that is worth a lot of power. And people don't even think about don't even think about that. Maybe they should rename it the black hole. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, I, it, it acts like a black hole. It pulls that it increases the airflow. Well, you've seen a bunch. If you're not running that, you're backing up. All right, we've seen what, it, what the bottom part of the air cleaner did. So uh, we took and put a, uh, the top on with a three inch over the counter $5 cheapo air cleaner. Um, let's see how that compares. We only dropped four, four CFM from before, from from just having the bottom on it. Right. But we're still 45 more than without anything. And you think it would be the other way around. I was going to say, you'd think any restriction or uh, to restrict the f flow of air would reduce the CFM some, but four. Four. <laughs> Gee. And, and the thing is, these are this is an air filter that you could replace. Every, well, yeah, I'd re, you replace this one every day, every week. Every week. Yep. Wow. I think Yancey said that too. Yeah, yeah, he did. That's what he recommended yep. every week. One of those. Make sure. Well, let's. Yeah, we'll put on that big five inch and see what difference that makes. I was gonna say that'd be curious. Yeah. I want to see. Okay. It. okay. Okay. We put the high dollar five inch air cleaner on here. Let's see what it does.
That went off just in time. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Boogie boogie. There we go. Yeah. Oh, darn. That one, that five inch added two. The last time I checked it, it took away yeah. from the three. But that's only worth two CFM for, for that much, almost half again as much air cleaner. Well, and this air breather's not legal. What? For the hobby stocks. Well, this one? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, You have to go with the three. Well, you couldn't get it on there anyway because you, you can't have a hole in the hood or anything. Yeah. Everything's got to be under the hood. Right. So, yeah, you couldn't run one of those. That's... One of the little three-inch filters is fine. Yeah. Okay. We uh, we tested this carburetor with the uh, with two different sizes of air cleaners. Now let's try this cool little tornado just to see what it does. Thought it was gonna blow up in my hand. <laughs> oh shoot! Let's see what the, how much how much that helps. Four hundred and thirty-nine <laughs> point four. That's the lowest reading that you had out of the yeah, yeah, four or five. Yeah, it took about a hundred out of it. <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't put one of those on my motorhome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but. I still like to be the guy who invented that. No kidding. He's Wouldn't probably. All. I'm sure he's down in the Bahamas with. Well, I'm gonna go there, but you know. Uh, yeah, we could all be. Fun. We could probably all be racing NASCAR. Hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah, he, he might be, as far as we know. So. Alrighty. Well, folks, I don't know about you guys out there, but I have thoroughly enjoyed this, Steve. <laughs> uh, it has been very interesting, and boy, just uh, all kinds of scientific stuff you might say kind of goes into it. And uh, man, it has been a real, uh, real thrill for me to have the opportunity to uh, be able to watch you do some of this and explain some of what goes on. It's a fun toy. <laughs> yeah, it would be. <laughs> I could see that. Uh, yeah, many times, many times I've watched my wife, heard my wife get up in the morning, <laughs> and I'm still down here playing. <laughs> I want everybody to know out there that today we. Basically, we're talking about the Rochester two-barrel carburetor for a hobby stock, but Steve and Big G Carburetors also does many, many other carburetors, I'm sure, and I know... Holly, Holly, Holly four barrels, and, and I do the 4412s. Yeah. Um, I'm not that well known here locally. It's uh, we, We've talked before off camera that uh, um, when you know a guy... For a long time, you've raced with them and you, you know them, and, and um, you hear he does carburetors. Yeah. Uh, well, you know they just don't pay much attention. Yeah. But uh, around the country, I have a quite a few mm -hmm. people that run my carburetors, and they love them. I was gonna say I don't think I got to show the map, but we've got a map up behind us, and Steve's got some pins in the map of. Uh, places where uh, he sold carburetors and I see southwest on there southeast Texas looks like was another one that you, you do quite a bit Australia Australia okay well you, Canada uh, I, I don't know if I told you or not but this will be on two websites in Australia so ah, maybe. well there, there's um, <laughs> oh maybe half a dozen is there yeah right over there but I don't uh, know what they put them on I don't think IMC I don't I'm pretty sure IMCA don't go over yeah, there yeah. but Another one of the people in racing in Kansas City, I think that probably the name just hasn't gotten out there. Uh, would that be a fair explanation? I mean, I know there are people that know about you, but just not on a large scale, because like you said, and I've had other people tell me, most of your business is out of town. Yeah, it is. Not, mine, 
Yeah. I'm doing a few, and, and then uh, um, for some guys, and then they'll uh, they'll send somebody up, and then they'll send two guys up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Give it a year or so. Word of mouth. Yeah. 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 But uh, once again, just let me say, Steve, it's been a real pleasure, buddy, and uh, I've enjoyed it, and I hope you have too. I have. This, <laughs> it's new for me. I've never had an interview before. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, that's going to wrap it up here with Steve Atkins at Big G Carburetors, I guess is what we would call that. So hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you hopefully at another shop somewhere else next week for some more tech info. So have a good week, and, man, I'm ready for spring. Racing. <laughs>